Sopato. Kwa sarabu nesu Makore ma shoma Tisatita sanga nizwa Neha maza kafa Tenzi ere Tenzi gazi rao Umea uyo Umea Nisambe Nisambe Propara Onisa Tinda Tukwa Ona tenzi ere Tenzi Kati Rao Yeah. Rao, 
tu ba Kwa sarabu nesu makore ma shoma tisatita sanga ni kwa ni ha maza kafa tenziere tenzikazi rao me auyo me aune mosa ni sambe ni sambe bu propara konisa tinda tsopwa ona tenziere tenzikazi rao
Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. God's own love the God, that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Our Heavenly Father, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you have given us a true faith and a sure hope, to strengthen this faith and hope in us all our days, that we may live as those who believe in the communion of saints and the forgiveness of sins, that is the return to eternal life through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, with the Holy Spirit, in the name of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Uh, we shall have an opening hymn.
Brothers and sisters, as we commend our sister Patricia Faith Kikile Masuna to our maker and our redeemer, may I welcome you all to this our parish of St. Luke's in Greenville. I want to welcome Baba Masuna. Uh, I want to welcome Mr. Uh, Suela uh, coming from Harvest House International in Kulawayo. Uh, also, I want to welcome uh, Baba Mafaralikwa, uh, who is uh, the priest working with me in the parish of St. Luke's. I want to welcome the Masunda family, I want to welcome the Pezuru family, fam uh, friends, uh, all St. Luke's gathered here to give this uh, final respect to our dearly uh, beloved uh, Patricia Figile Masunda. Our service is going to be by the ASP Alternative Service Book 1980 and it begins on page 8. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And so together we pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are given, cleanse the laws of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and greatly magnify you.
reading is taken from the Psalm of David, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Go before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of the Lord.
value, you get that to give us a piece uh, of the value. Because that's not my office. 
Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I've met a lot of uh, 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 public figures. Tulipo wa masuna, kwa hivyo ya wachipata mawa kwa mchema. So we have a great number uh, of uh, people in higher offices in Munikaide, Zimbabwe, who are with us here. Uh, I don't want to mention anyone by name, but just to offer my respect as I welcome you to our parish of St. Luke's. I welcome the related family and friends uh, and the Fikile and Pesumu families. Allow me to share a few reflections uh, this morning. Uh, this morning is not like the previous two nights because it is not a morning of evangelism, but it is a morning of offering our last respect uh, to our very own, our beloved Fikile. Uh, so we are just going to uh, offer a few points of reflection uh, based on scripture and on the life that we see, uh, we saw Fikile live, uh, and also as an encouragement to us uh, who are left in this world as we continue to journey, uh, preparing to meet Fikile and others who went before us uh, should uh, leave. I'm going to prioritize uh, Psalms 23. Uh, yes, uh, scripture was read from John, but I'm, I'm giving priority to Psalm 23, uh, particularly verses 1 and 2. Uh, as I walked into my office this morning, I couldn't help uh, but think of how Fikile spent a week here at church uh, with Mary Ateli uh, doing the flowers at the front of my office, at the uh, entrance to my office. They came to me and said, Baba, uh, the entrance to your office is not good looking. This is the biggest office of the parish, but we don't like the outlook of the entrance of you to, to your office. And so they exerted themselves uh, without no scent from the parish, uh, brought some flowers, uh, brought their helpers, and did the rockery that is just at the entrance to my office. Uh, you may want to go and see uh, the amazing way with flowers uh, that she did there at the entrance to my office. I remember in January when I met Fikile, she came to church and said, Baba, uh, my uh, blood pressure was always up, so I couldn't go to get vaccination. Uh, and consequently, I didn't come to church because I was not vaccinated, because we uh, uh, were the impression that we only receiving parishioners who are vaccinated to be attending services. So Fikile was uh, deeply troubled with her blood pressure, uh, which was uh, not getting stable for her to be able to be vaccinated. But when she came in January, she said, Father, finally I'm vaccinated, and I'm happy uh, to tell you that I will be coming to church and I will be resuming uh, my commitment, my efforts towards uh, the vulnerable, towards the soup kitchen. If you want to know Fikile, uh, she's a woman who has always found in those humble ministries of the church. Like I said, uh, you never see Fikile out here. Uh, but Fikile never took pleasure in coming up here in front, giving notices uh, with the attention of everybody. But she would rather be uh, in the background, cooking for the vulnerable people, in the background, giving ideas, in the background, supporting some crucial ministries of the parish. And that was Fikile for you, a humble Christian. Mukristo Jaye Jaye, and a definition even Mukristo. Most of us Christians have become busy bodies. We see you busy running all over the place. Yet, what you achieve, what you do, is just very little. So what's busy is the body. But in your mind, in your spirit, you are not that busy. But your body uh, expresses a very busy, busy attitude when deep down inside your spiritual efforts uh, are, are not uh, any busy. Fikile was a person who was never a busy body, but she was busy spiritually. And it was evident with the works and the ministry ministries that she was involved in in the church. It told me that Fikile was so busy spiritually because the fruits of the Spirit were so evident on Fikile's life. Remember yesterday and the day before I mentioned that many people are obsessed with the kind of life that they live. Fikile had everything uh, that she, 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 she needed. I went to her house sometime. She asked me, which coffee baba do you want? Do you want Jacobs? Do you want the coffee? If it's tea, what 
tea? Do you want do you want green tea? Do you want black tea? Do you want red tea or yellow tea? <laughs> she, she had all the teas, she had all the coffees in her home. Baba, which room do you want us to sit? Which sitting room? She had everything. But that is not the disaster. The disaster is when you have everything and you are obsessed with what you have. When you are obsessed with the coffees and the teas in your home and you find no time to go out of your comfort and serve God in ministries or humble ministries, that is the calamity. Because one day you are going to leave the teas behind as you lie in the casket. One day you are going to leave the sitting rooms, the lounges in your house and lie in a casket. And the works of mercy, the works of charity, who remain? And as I said, many of us, history will judge us. Because history has it. How many works of charity, how many works of mercy were you engaged in? It is history and not Jesus Christ who, which is going to judge us. And so as I go into the scripture, uh, Psalms 23, verses 1 and 2, it is a psalm that was written by David, the King David, the greatest king of all. The one who consolidated uh, the nations of Israel into one and divided them into 12 uh, provinces. And each province of the 12 would bring offerings, would bring uh, food to the house of the king, would bring offerings and would bring uh, uh, things to use in the house of the Lord. And so the kingdom of Israel was most effective during the time of David. But David is a very reflective king. That is what I'm challenging you to this morning as I give my reflections. You must be a very reflective human being. You know what David remembered as he was writing this song? By the time of writing, David was already a very famous and a very popular king. But he's not obsessed with the riches that were moving. Um, he's writing this sound. He's a rich man, a very powerful and popular figure. But he remembered the time when he was in the shepherd's field, shepherding the sheep of his father. And he says, Jehovah, you are my shepherd. He remembers the times when he was a shepherd. He remembers the comfort. He he remembers the encouragement, he remembers the protection that he enjoyed from the Lord as he was a shepherd in the field. And so he went down memory lane. Many of us, you know, the greatest calamity is that we don't remember things. If you are to remember very well what was happening in your life some 30, 40 years ago, and you look at where you are today, you must not forget to be humble. You must not forget to give glory to God. You must not forget to acknowledge the comfort, the protection that you enjoyed from the Lord 40 years ago. When we in the of us, you shouldn't be here today. Ask yourself two years ago. I don't want to take you 40 years ago, but two years ago, many of our family members and friends paid with COVID. Some of those who paid were much more healthier. There are no underlying issues. But some of us have underlying issues, but we survived the two years of COVID. And what I'm asking for, what I'm exhorting you to, is to a memory and remembrance of what God has done in your life. And that must propel you to be doing good things for other people. That must propel you to show mercy and kindness. That must propel you to be generous to other people. Because if you remember what God has done to you, you can only tell yourself that whatever you have today does not belong to you, but belongs to God. But what is the order of the day today in the world, in our country, in our communities? One wa wa. People are so obsessed uh, with gathering a lot of wealth to themselves. And some of the world is gathered at the expense of other people who are suffering, at the expense of the indigents who are there in Uwe. But people are busy uh, plundering uh, the natural resources of the world which God made for us to share and to live a good life, all of us. But some of us are taking all those to themselves. Uh, they are domesticating uh, the resources that God gave for the world to share. Some are domesticating those resources to themselves. My challenge today is let us be like the kid who did not domesticate flowers in Babaki, but she brought flowers from her home and brought them to the church to share for the greater glory of God. She did not uh, say, these are my flowers, so if the church wants the flowers, you must pay for them, because she paid 
she gave her resources. Most importantly, she gave her heart to the benefits of the vulnerable and to the benefit of the common good of the church of God and her community at large. I was talking and having a discourse with family members and I swear. Yesterday they were saying, Papa, that was true that you said in the ceremony. And Buya was so humble. Buya was so selfless. Buya was in, always in a hurry to share whatever she, she had with people. And today, the very same reasons that you were saying, as you were mourning Fikile, I heard people were saying, Must be Jakasia, Jakasia, with Fikile at once, when she was so good. She was so humble. And people think those people who are humble, people who are so good, must not die. But the, uh, the, the plan of God, uh, the arrangement is that even the good and the bad, they will all surely die. Even the rich and the poor, they will all surely die. Those with beautiful gardens and those with ugly gardens, they will surely die. Those with a good heart, those with a bad heart, they will surely all die. Those who are so good looking and those who are not so good looking, all will surely die. So our argument is not about death. But our argument is about what are we doing in our learnedness, in our academic uh, prowess. What are we doing to serve God? What are we doing to advance the agenda of God, which is doing good to our brothers and sisters? I remember our um, departed Archbishop Desmond Tutu, may so rest in peace. He said, you must do a little bit of good wherever you are. I'm not challenging you to do it. A, a very huge act of goodness. No. I'm saying just do your little bit of good wherever you are. And when little bits of good done by citizen A, citizen B, and C, and E, when they are put together, they overwhelm the world. Do your little bit of kindness wherever you are. Do your little bit of generosity wherever you are. And when those pieces of generosity, when those pieces of kindness, when those pieces of goodness are then put together, they will overwhelm and make our world a better place. And so Fikile knew that she was a sheep which belonged to Christ, the good shepherd. So I can hear Fikile saying these words, the words said by David to us this morning as the reader was reading. I could hear Fikile saying the same words, that the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. What does it mean? to be a sheep which belongs to a shepherd. Number one, you have to understand that a sheep is not, uh, it's not a public property, it is a domestic animal, it is not a wild animal. But some of us continue to be wild citizens, continue to be wild Christians. Fikile was not a wild member of this church, but she was uh, a, a, a domestic object of the Lord, because all that she did was guided by the word of the Lord. And so a sheep is a property which is bought and then kept in the home. Fikile was kept in the house of the Lord. That's why I uh, pleaded with Baba and Baba was very uh, good and said, Baba, Fikile's body is going to come to St. Luke's so that St. Luke and the rest of the family members are going to bid farewell to her in the parish of St. Luke's. Because he understood his wife that she's the one individual who had given herself to the service of the Lord. And there was no befitting set off like that which we are doing today to have Fikile within the parish of St. Luke's singing hymns, uh, giving incense, uh, singing uh, beautiful organ hymns. She loved the organ very much. And so I had to go to Paine to invite the organists of the parish who come on Sunday to say, come and play the organ for Fikile because that is what she wanted. She was not a wild animal, but she was a domestic animal, a sheep which belonged to the Lord. And so I can hear Fikile say, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. If you subject yourself to the shepherding of the good shepherd, you shall not want. Even when it comes to a time of illness, I tell you when we went to Fikile, but here she would encourage us and say, why are you sad? Let's sing hymns, don't be sad. She is the one who is supposed to be very sad because she was ill. But she was encouraging us. Just imagine being encouraged by the one whom we have come to encourage. That was Fikile for you, full of energy when it comes to the things of the Lord. And she said, I shall not want even in sickness. I will continue to give praises to the Lord because the Lord is my shepherd. So when you make the Lord your shepherd, you are not worried. Even through a difficult e economy, the Lord can see you through. Even in a difficult period of the pandemic, 
God will see you through because you did make him your shepherd. And so when you make the Lord your shepherd, you take the lead and you fall. So you are not going to be worried about where am I going to find food. Because the sheep, when it follows the shepherd, the shepherd knows where to find the greener pastures. Because the psalm says, you lead me through the greener pastures because you know, he knows where the greener pastures are. You must read this psalm, this psalm in context because David was in Palestine and the better part of that land is a desert. So greener pastures were very rare, they were not easy to come back. So it needed a good shepherd to be able to navigate and lead the sheep to greener pastures and to where the water was. And the duty of the sheep is not to think and to muse about where should I get water, where should I get greener pastures. The duty of the sheep is just to follow the shepherd and the shepherd will lead the sheep to where the water, to where the green pastures are. And so Fikile was never obsessed about this life here on earth. I can simply say she died peacefully because when we went to her she was sick but she was so peaceful. She had radiated this uh, good spirit of the Lord around here. You can't afford to be saved. Around here you can't afford to be worried. She ended died last during the time of her illness. That was Fikile because she trusted in the Lord as a shepherd. The second part of the psalm, it says, He makes me lie in green pastures, and He leads me beside the peaceful waters, and renews life within me. I want to end my reflections there. Brothers and sisters, this sound does not relate to people who think they are self-sufficient, but it relates to people who seek to find comfort in the Lord, the humble, the poor spirit whom I mentioned yesterday. And so before a man truly says, the Lord is my shepherd, he must first feel to be a sheep in nature, so vulnerable, so helpless without the Lord. And so you go seeking comfort, and so you go seeking protection from the Lord. But we feel like we can do it by ourselves, and so we don't need the Lord. My church in Asia, Asia, man, we have one of the Akofi, uh, COVID, but COVID, but people are choosing to love uh, the, the joys of this world. They don't find time uh, to come to the house of the Lord, to worship, to listen to the word of the, the Lord, and to commit themselves to serving the Lord. But I'm saying, uh, there comes a time when you will lie, like Fikile is lying in the casket. Only the words, Mama Zakanaka, do not tell you. The last bit of Psalm 23 is so exciting. Because it says, I will remain in the house of the Lord forever and ever. So it means when you make the Lord your shepherd, you will live in the house of the Lord. Even as you live, you will continue to be in the house of the Lord. Even as you die, you will continue to be in the house of the Lord. Fikile was in the house of the Lord as she lived. Why you go to my family and my children who can scatter you? So the way of behaving, even as she was married to Barari, the city of Barari, you hear people are told that there is a humble woman. Because she lived in the house of the Lord as she was living in this world. How did she express that? She expressed that by identifying with the poor, by identifying with the vulnerable, by identifying with those who were low of law, by identifying with the indigents. And by being a good mother and a good ambuya and a good uh, wife uh, to Baba Masuna. So she lived in the house of the Lord as she was in the world. Even as she has died today, as we are going to be burying here in the one in Cemetery, she continues to live in the house of the Lord. Why? Because the Lord is taking care of her now. Because of the works that she did. She is certainly in the hands of the Lord. She is continuing to be in the house of the Lord. What has changed is that she is now in the upper, upper room of the same house of the Father. This our Father is the Father who owns the world and the heaven. So Fikile left the, uh, the ground floor of the same house of the same Father and now she is in the upper room of the same house of the same Father who is our Lord and our Keeper, our Redeemer who lives now and forever. May I bless you, brothers and sisters, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now I'll ask you all to stand. I want us to uh, give you each other.
child at peace. Uh, Christ is our peace. He reconciled us with God in one body by the cross. And this morning, as we gather to bid farewell to Fiki Patricia Faith Masunda, we meet in the Lord's peace to share His peace. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another signs of peace.
Peter, this is on page 16. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right in our duty and joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord, for He is your living word. Through Him we have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through Him we have freed us from the slave of sin giving him to be born as man and to die on the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him, you have sent upon us your holy night, living spirit, and made us a people of your own possession. Therefore, with the angels, with the angels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Yeah. 
check for you. Eat and drink this gift in remembrance that he died, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Give thanks to the Lord, for He is gracious. And together in thanksgiving we pray, Almighty God, we thank you for giving us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, through him who offered you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live in the way to your grace and glory. Amen. Amen. And so the Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in the green shop, in the green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. And so may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Brothers and sisters, our service is ended. Go in peace to serve and love the Lord. Thank you very much. Uh, at this point uh, in time, uh, I want to make an acknowledgement of uh, the current acting mayor of the city of Harare uh, and also uh, the representative uh, minister of religion with uh, the Nyarato uh, group, Dukauti Titendemari Kuti Wadipakati Pedu. Iwago, Matigore Mekeza, Chukusei, Munara Unayedu. Kaunaku Kumiza Mfundi Siwena. Kutuwa Chitora Program Pagwaino and lead the section of speeches before we get to a time of body viewing and departure to Warren News. Thank you, Baba. That's what we need now.
asked me to make a banner for her. I've sent to my sisters and my other cousins. In love and memory of Mrs. Figile Patricia Faith Masunda, wife, mother, aunt, sister, grandmother, Mama Sarah Seven, Nipesu. The unifier, ever smiling, full of love, compassionate, considerate, courageous, affectionate, empathic, exuberant, impartial, sincere, sympathetic, sympathetic forever remembered. Hallelujah. I want my speakers to, I think with time, when I take after my uncle, in name the last born, Kumbabwedu. My uncle is the last born, Kumbabwedu, so I'll take after my uncle. I always want to keep time. I've got some blood. See, I, uh, I'm the only one who can tell me that this is time. So I have a few minutes, our uh, speakers, my second will catch up time. Masunda family would like to ask Mrs. Wallant to come forward to come to give us a speech. Then, we, after that, we need to. Masukuru, we start with Masukuru. Masukuru. Then, after Vana. Then, as we go. Masukuru. Mrs. Wena, Samuel Sosuel will come and talk for Masukuru.
Sekuru, they have not done it alone. Most of our funerals in the family beat as well as being um, or a Masunda uh, funeral, they took care of all those funerals. It's not because Sekuru had the money. I'll also repeat what Reverend Sermani has been saying. It was because of Mbuya's generous uh, giving. She had that heart to reach out uh, to the family. And I'm glad that she also did that to the community. Our mothers received a, stip a stipend every month. It's not because of uh, they could not work or what. It's all because she, it was her heart which felt that they needed to have one. Unfortunately, I had hoped that uh, I had hoped that uh, my cousin who arrived early hours from Zambia would be in the um, sanctuary, but unfortunately, she can't take it in. We went to Zambia one year to see um, my little Jewish kids to find out how they were faring and to see where they are staying. This was all organized by Ambuya. But she then tried to dilute that they don't go for Ghana, Madumet, but we had to go being the youngest and then the eldest, Ms. Kurokama Sunda Sistembega, to see him the way, uh, Nini, where she stayed and, and meet her family. To see how responsible she was, Sekuru turned 70 on the 28th of January, but she was in hospital. Believe it or not, she was planning to have that 70. And then when I realized on Wednesday she was not dis uh, discharged, I said, we are, we cannot do it. He says, we'll do it. Until I realized that I can't uh, talk to her alone. I talked to my Manya, and my Manya said, only talk to this. To this, the only person who convinced her that let's defer the 70. The Sunday the 6th, I went to see her, again to see how responsible she was. She asked an S8 to give us privacy, and she poured her heart, and at the same time while she, she was sick, but she was concerned about Sekuru, she was concerned about Mbuya Nagindi. There she is, in her oxygen but she's thinking of other people. The next hour is resourceful. God had blessed her works of her hands, as you heard about the flowers she prepared in church in her house, but she used the talent to gain money when she was running a shop in Avondale, and then she had a business in the electrical, uh, of electrical appliances um, at Newlands Shopping Center. The next hour is reliable. She was very reliable and kept promises. One of my friends said to me, your boy are dressed so elegant. I tried to look in her auto, thinking Chaita Chizukuru, no Boisa Zambia, no Boisa Ma Tomi, and But there's nothing like that in her auto. That's her elegance. I've never seen where I think there will be a funeral for Kasunga Zambia. Today I said I'm not going to wear Ria Zina, but I'll look also, I'm elegant, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to match her standards. standards. So I think I tried. Then now I move to my own capacity as Samueli so. We are until her death, but she called me Mrs. Tapona that never changed with her. In my household, where is common is known as Kokom Skana. Ask me how that came about. When they were mayor and mayoress, that's the time also God set me apart to save him. So I was um, I was being ordained, and then uh, City Presbyterian Church was. Um, was celebrating the 100 years. So what happened now, my granddaughter is usually seeing uh, Sekuru and Buya, Kumanda, Chisipiti, or in my house, never in a church. And then she froze. 
to a Sunday school presenting something. Tanaka flows. So then afterwards, they said, but why did you do that? Kukosa uh, was not worried about you. He said, ah, the koko mskana, in koko mkomana, but I was wondering why are they there? So that's how the names. Koko is like, I don't know why she decided to put in Sikana because it's grand, it's great grandmother, and now which means it's a great grandmother Mskana or girl. So that's how they identify with the Koko Mskana and Koko Mkoman. In 1996, my late, uh, I was going through challenges in my life, very difficult challenges. We needed uh, really a support. But my mother being strict and not believing in other things, she then said to Mbuya Chikide, you take care of her. She's made her decisions, but you walk with her. 20, uh, 2001, my mother passed on, and Mbuya Chikide took that role to be my mother, not to be my Mbuya. I'll tell you the things I told Mbuya Chikide, which I've never shared with my sisters. Why? Because she never judged me. She accommodated me. She would support me even in my church ministry. She was more than my confidante. She never judged me. When I went to see her, when we had our privacy, and she put her heart, I then said to her, you've been in hospital, we're not being allowed to come in. But now who was buying nighties for you? Since she bought for my mother or for my minis, I thought it's time to pay back. And then she says, go and look for my nighties and bring them. When you come back uh, Sunday, that was the Sunday, the 13th, you bring the nighties in case I'm admitted, then I'll have extra nighties. I sent the, the Vazuru, Kokom Scanner is a, a, a night dress. Going to Westgate, I was referred to this uh, shop in Westgate. But guess what was who said when they came back? They said, ah, Coco, those nitrates are not in Coco's kind of style. <laughs> so I never bought the night. Then she knew I was going to Blawayo on Friday. And why I struggled to go to Blawayo after telling me only God knows. So I just wanted to say how we I was. It just expressed Words fail me to say she was more than a mother to me. She was more than an aunt to me. She took what her daughter said to look after me and to look after me so well. And I have no regrets. I bonded with her. I thank God for that opportunity. How about you? Thank you very much. I cannot say much. It's in the blood, it runs in the blood. So if I say a lot, I don't. But thank God for that. And I will now call upon Sekuru Takuma, who will speak on behalf. Sekuru Takuma, Sunda, he will speak on behalf of children. Bye. Congregated here 
honouring her and honouring her work. The second um, verse I'd like to share with you is from Matthew 10, 14. And whosoever shall not receive, you know, hear your words, depart out of that house or city and shake off the dust of your feet. So basically what I'm alluding to here is nothing in life is easy. And um, she took up golf very late in life. And um, I have the dubious distinction of being her first teacher. And um, I take great pride in that. And when you're teaching someone something, it's even harder as a son to teach your mom to do something because you end up being frustrated with her. But um, she would listen eventually. And um, where I take solace from this verse is that she never gave up. Those of you who know her, she's a very determined woman, very strong, willed, and powerful. And I think that was represented in her game and as the lady from uh, Royal will attest to her contribution to the community and the club. Lastly, um, in the last three weeks it was tough being around her because she really was suffering for those of you. And um, yesterday whilst doing the body viewing, it gave me great comfort and peace that she's finally now resting. Thank you. Right, thank you very much. Please, uh, church members, all of you in here, we have uh, taken time off your very busy schedules to be with us in bearing our daughter, sister, Daita. Uh, friends, relatives, Masunda family, Mklanga uh, family. I'm Stephen Mklanga, that's my name, brother to Fikile. Uh, but I won't be using a uh, figure a lot. I'll be saying my fixer, because that's how we used to affectionately know her and call her. Now, effectively, I'll say that uh, she's gone too soon. Uh, I'll meet her, have a chat together, and say, Brother, man, you know, life is short. Eh? We should meet, talk, it is say. And definitely, that's what she's talking about. But. I haven't heard of any person born of men and women who has left this world walking on two legs. We all, this is our path, and we all to go this way. Now you ask yourself, what did you do during the time when you were alive? That person will determine what your life was and its worth it is. So I'm going to start by reading uh, just this, some words written by Mukoma, brother Victor Duma Pesulu, <coughs> my brother. <coughs> He could not be here, he's in the UK. So we communicated and via email, he sent me something. I hope I won't take too much doing that, but it's he, something we feel that he is our last thing of our beloved uh, daughter. It's something we have to do. Thank you there, my little sister. This is your brother saying goodbye, farewell. I'm devastated and I'm unable to be there at your burial. But trust me, I am with you in spirit. Losing you was extremely painful and left me inconsolable. I thought you were making good progress towards recovery, only to get a frantic call from Sarah, which was initially incomprehensible,
because of the commotion surrounding him. It became clear that he had been snatched away from us in the cruelest fashion. What a void we live. I am forever now without my fixer. I wake up to the fact that you are gone and try and reverse it. Try and change it to no avail. Only to break down and cry. My children are grief stricken with the loss of their aunt. Charlotte and James could not believe it. It was too soon. They have just one auntie left and will do what we can to replicate your efforts at supporting her and looking after her. I have to be grateful for my wonderful memories, including the last visit you made to see us in 2019. We cherish those memories and hoped for a repeat visit uh, that we were taken from us to end. Thank you for the white feather that floated down our garden. As observed by my wife Caroline in the morning, we departed. She recognized what it was. A sign that a loved one is watching over you. We went outside and it's safely secured in my wallet. Your charitable work, selfless endeavors have been commended. Your management and control of family affairs has been exemplary. Your unstinting care for your sister Ivy is just wonderful. You've been a great loving wife and a partner to me. You brought up your boys, Masuguru, with the Christian ethics, and recently you extended those duties to your grandchildren. Keeping the faith. I would like to say, <coughs> Thank you, all friends and family, for coming here to say a final goodbye. God bless you, dear sister, and your memory will linger forever. Right, this is what uh, Victor wrote, and I've read it the way he wrote it, word for word. Thank you. Now, just a second, I want to highlight one or two things. I won't take too much time. Uh, I dropped a few points. It was now I'm wearing a, quite a number of jackets today. The jacket of the father, of the brother, of the clan. Yeah, because this is the last time really we have got anything physical with her or for me remains will be intended. Now, I'll say that uh, a lot of things have been said, and very good things. I remember when I was doing literature years ago, I think it was uh, Mark Anthony uh, at the burial of uh, my great burial about Caesar. And uh, he said that uh, the good, but you can correct me, the good that people do is often intended with their bones, but the evil leaves after that. I want the gist of the statement, not exactly maybe the uh, you know, way to way court. Now, I would say that. Uh, my fixer broke the, she actually broke the walls. In that I only had good things about her so far and nothing bad. So I say that uh, she was a good person. Now why we say so? She had a pleasant uh, personality. She was genuinely loving and she was somebody who would give. I'll give you something quick here. There was one time she came with a bag full of clothing, one of my clothes. I said, I'm going through my wardrobe, you know. And I saw there's so many things in there that are going to be used. Why don't I give them to somebody who can make better use of them? That was them. We say, good evening, you know, how are you? It is it. We would talk a lot about the phone sometimes, the uh, shopping arena, it is it. That's what it was like, my son. Sakamuna, Karadi, Aganaka. I heard a lot about all the good ways that we are doing in church. Now, I want to give you a bit of a background about that. Because you don't just go from nowhere and then you become a very good person. Baba, Pez Runtla, Harris, family Pez Runtla, Mama, they were very active members of the Anglican Church, Popoma St. Andrew's Church. Even me, like yesterday when I had the heaven teaching, 
you know, to, to us, you just see. I remember the church, when I told me about the Anglican church, baptized, uh, you know, uh, confirmed, and the, I pulled out my uh, prayer book I used to use years ago. And I said that uh, maybe I should take over from here and continue, you know. Yeah, maybe we can go into church as well. Okay. <laughs> Maybe that's what tribute I can give her to do that. Again, Sikil, uh, I know her from very early ages, not like uh, being told, you grew up together. And uh, she was uh, just beautiful. I knew whenever she came from the shower and when she was working, it was a good deal of treats. Huh? So I would get a car, wash it very clean, 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 polish it with the polish the tires, you see. Then I knew that from the town sometimes when going to some very good kids. When we went to boarding school, people would say, I know what, I just don't really know that you guys did my school with school. Let's go and get this and that and that. That's what she was like, okay? But now she's gone and gone too soon for us. Already a void has been left in our hearts. Uh, we say, sister, we did a sterling job. But again, briefly, we want to say who was. Mafisi. Baba Mafisi, the father, that is from the Praga, Munda also Chipinge, Mama, South African, Saka, Halebo, that's why the children were very beautiful. It was the mix of genes, yeah? I talk about it. I want to read that story to watch as well when uh, she saw uh, her, uh, her and she uh, we have two beautiful sons, good children, or a Simba. Yeah? I think you saw the last one giving a speech here. Pasha took ten that I saw, Wakakara ni Mwanawedu, Makoda Kawanda, and unlike what the people do that is never because of divorce, you, it was a proper until death do us part. Now they always say behind a very strong man, you know, there's a strong woman. Now the woman is gone physically, but I believe that the spirit of the thing will continue giving the support. And then we'll show you the Simba, again the Rambi, So thank you very much, eh? and I yeah, hope as well I shall start using my book more effectively than where I have put it. <laughs> thank you very much, all of you.
There was a school called Mjandane, which was run by the city council. And what really was the most pleasant surprise was that young Chale, in his own levels, beat the jackpot and put Mjandane on the map. It really became evident that Mjandane was a very special school that being run by the city council will produce this result. The government, whether it's colonial or modern, is very jealous. They took the school and ran it as a government school and it became named the city art. Uganda was also, I believe, one of the king's generals. Um, the way in which my sisters who I interrogated last night, because I'm much older than Uma Sundaro, the filial, reminded me that Uma Sundaro and Uyenja and the men, I went to the level of the IOSG. Ulama was built in a way that is very different to Harari. It was very integrated, and it crosses him, that's, I wish I'd talked to him before. Um, and Bulawa really produced uh, institutional frameworks that are co uh, um, facilitated the transition from the rural, the modern that were being introduced to, uh, into how people were going to run their own lives. So, in 1960, as I remember, uh, new institutions were set up under this Federation of Rhodesia in Nasale, in Bilo, um, Harare, and came from the south, a generation of real professionals, uh, or sister Johanna uh, Hezu, uh, a group of young, Zimbabweans went to South Africa and brought with them young wives from South Africa who were professional, who value added what we ourselves were trying to do. They were a community which really brought into our lives in Hulawayo a new perspective of how life is. I remember when young Chitebo uh, passed through our home to marry his young Chile in South Africa with his best man, who later became Professor Samkange. Um, they slept at our house, telling us about what we were going to be doing there, and they added the young wives from South Africa who mm -hmm. value added our lives here in our country. Right, who person, or person uh, came to actually value add for us in the life that we try in the health sector. Fikile became one of the nurse trainees in Bilo. If you knew Bilo at the time, that's where the most beautiful, brilliant academic girls went to train. And what fascinated us, the youngsters at that time, they were so kids. <laughs> they were so kids. And they were so, they were like angels actually. They really were. But they were And it was really quite incredible. So the best of the peak of whites. Thank <laughs> you. 
actually found a partner, his princess, who really then stood in the enemy part of the society to mesh. So our Masunda, whose ambition really was to achieve the best, and indeed Mahadele had 11 children, Uyan Tanukadali was the youngest. Ufigile was the youngest in her family, with her sister, who I be, and the who we were again, who Victor. Um, there was a certain uh, quality which families tried to um, drive into us, that charity begins at home, and that until you yourself were able to look after yourself, you could not then go out and do what a that type of charity works. But what we now then came to understand with the way people like each other in Russia uh, push the boundaries was that um, um, it's not charity work, but it's development work. That's where Uma uh, Sundage, Napa, this really showed us over the years picking at the time of the inclusive government. Who figure was very accomplished, but she also was somebody who embraced diversity. It didn't matter who you were, or what you were, or how people saw you. She was very aware that everybody had something very important to actually contribute to the project of development.
instruments are rich as the Masunda family, by Umanogas and Wetom Kudu, who feel there, and that this work needs to actually be formalized by the Masunda family, and uh, we can talk a bit about it, and uh, I'm sure something will really happen, because it has to happen to actually get us the um, epistemological break with the past, where men who take positions, public positions, leave their wives at home, and we really don't know what the wife's qualities are in adding value to the community that we come from. I umo chuti mchule baby brother. So In the family, I want to know why really adding value to what we were all looking to learn in that uh, part of the history of our country. Yamo. Thank you very much. I think I've got now the power to set upon me that to, to pull everyone is going to take longer, but I will leave my action to take their turn. Run Harare of the updates and the next coming session is Chet Wadden, then section four representative. Can we be short so that we catch up time? Thank you very much. this very solemn moment. Um, allow me to just acknowledge uh, Mr. Mas Much Masunda, as we know him, and the family, and Labo Wonke Abaton Pengayo, Panunyarikana Besewapan, relatives and friends, ladies and gentlemen. Bakundisi, Tumakurene Kezai. I stand here, you know, um, really stricken uh, to find that one of us is lying there. Uh, it's not something that we expected. And also, allow me to repeat some of the things that have been said. I think you all appreciate that we didn't sit together and come up with these um, uh, speeches. But what happens is that it, it affirms what truly Fikili uh, was. Personally, I knew Fikile a little longer than she became a golfer. But I'm here today representing the golfing fraternity and to talk about Fikile the golfer. <coughs> and also to convey our condolence messages um, on behalf of the, the, the golfing ladies and those that couldn't make it this morning. Allow me to ask the lady golfers to stand, to show themselves, and in honor of our beloved colleague. Um, really, Fikile joined, uh, thank you ladies, you made this today. Um, Fikile joined um, Royal Harare Golf Club in September 2004. No sooner did she become an adult golfer and also became involved in the administrative roles. In 2011, she served on the ladies' apex body, the Zimbabwe Ladies Golf Union, as an executive officer, one of three key positions that run the affairs of the union. In 2017, she joined the ladies' committee at her home club, Royal Harare Golf Club. That was after following her stint as a, a mayor. So she never stopped saving. The Harare Royal Golf Club uh, committee was charged with the running, is charged rather with the running of the affairs of the ladies' golf activities at the club. She served as a committee member until her untimely passing. So you can imagine from 2017 until now, uh, what a loss it is for us. Fikile was of a very calm demeanor and always supportive. Her journey through life with Much saw her become the mayor of Harare, a position she held with humility and commitment. 
I've had many a speaker here today to confirm that. These are things that came to our minds as we try to put something together for Fikile. So Fikile was a true um, committed person, hardworking, and you know, very down to earth. I personally had a few opportunities of interacting with her in her capacity as Mary's and saw how hard she applied herself. Still, she remained simple and unassuming to her working bodies and the community at large. <coughs> we received the message of your untimely passing, Fikile, with great shock and sadness. You will be sadly missed, Fikile. We wish the Masuna family God send comfort in this difficult time. May your dear soul rest in eternal peace. Such a 
ability. When she was in this church, she would sit to the left, the left pew. You would not recognize it that she is a mayoress of a big capital city like that. Until was, unless someone tells you that, ah, do you know that lady? She is the man. What? Yes, she is the man. But the rector is very pleased. She was a woman who wanted to work for her God. Not in front, like some of us do, but behind the scenes. You do this, that, and the other. To ensure the church of God, the work of God, is progressing well. Ladies and gentlemen, you shall go back to your homes. But we as a church, whenever we gather here, we will miss Mrs. Masu. Every Sunday, we know her position, the left side of the truth, that's where she used to sit. She will come in at the seven thirty. Important, 
is the impact that you make through your deeds, the impact, the legacy you leave behind. That has to be. And from all of the attributes that have been mentioned about uh, our system thinking, humility, and so on, uh, Spitmile was very smart, a smart lady. Whoever the church was in, they said, someone said that to this morning. She was a very smart lady. But, and, and she dressed so elegantly, but she was modest. She was not flashy. She had everything, someone made it, but she was not showy. And remember when she was, I remember when she was, uh, the, 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 during, Today's tenure is uh, mayor, and she was mayor. Pinkley touched the lives in airport. She joined uh, the Ministry of Compassion to for outreaches to airport. And I remember one Christmas, we were all blessed when Pinkley brought cardboard boxes full of new clothes. You know, some of us, when we are asked to give, we give old clothes. Clothes that I know, clothes that no longer fit me. But these were new clothes from the mayor's uh, chief, I think. Shoes, t-shirts for the children. She brought cheers to the widows and orphans in uh, April. Yet in all that, even in all the works that people have been talking about, she never sought recognition. Someone would have asked the, the cameraman who have taken cameras with him to Edward. The, the press would have been there. And the, the next day newspapers are watching. Come and see what Amai was doing. <laughs> but not he. She was not in the limelight. Remained happy. And uh, uh, I think uh, Baba also touched on uh, the, her passion for flowers. You look at the, I'm not surprised, we shouldn't be surprised to see how beautiful this church is. People have a love for flowers. And she, uh, she, she extended this passion to the church. That's why she belonged to the flower guild to decorate the churches. Now, a lot of us are good at plucking, you know, flowers. This is a beautiful flower. This is a beautiful flower. But no, as Reverend Selema said, she loved nature and she grew the flowers themselves. I was very amazed when Reverend Selema said, once during you heard about a, a planting a garden over there. I invite you all to go and see the front of the rector's office. See the beautiful uh, succulents there. And the Reverend Seleman said that one time Fikile came here during a dry spell. And what did she do? Got a bucket of water. Asked for a bucket, fetched some water, and there she was watering the garden. And the act of humility, acts of humility. And to tell you the truth, there are workers here. We got crowns with. She didn't wait to supervise. She was actually working then. So <coughs> we salute We salute uh, uh, people for her humility. I think uh, a lot of us, would have uh, taken the work. Everybody has been talking about the, the works of charity she did and so on. And enough, like the airport, the way she worked in airport, it was enough for her, she, for, for, for her to be bestowed with the honor of philanthropy. But like I said, she didn't choose recognition at all. Lastly, I want to, having had all these works 
of uh, the good works. I want to end by uh, saying, uh, by <coughs> reflecting on the statement that we normally uh, uh, make uh, accompanying a death notice. <coughs> we say, like in the paper, Mrs. Fikilemas Munda has passed on. She is survived by a husband, Mr. Mishalemas Munda, and two sons, and the two granddaughters, isn't it? One grandson. Eh? Two grandsons and two grandsons. Okay, yes. Now, she is survived. I used to wonder, when you say she is survived, it's like we're saying people are going to live for her. But no, you, you translate that. The uh, equivalent translation is shown when someone departs. We say Atisiya in Shona. I don't know what you say in the real. My my Yes. It's so much one. Atisiya. And you know that statement is very profound for me. The translation in English would be, she leaves behind. When you are going somewhere, Mr. Masuda, you leave your children in charge. You give them a charge. Please look after the goats. Look after the flowers. Remember to water the flowers. You are leaving someone to do that. Now, this departure, you never, you are not going to, people are not going to come back. But we are saying, oh, that statement alone is, a, is profound. It's like a charge. You are being asked or expected to recognize or identify her aspirations, her hopes, her dreams, and carry on. I think somebody has already mentioned they want to go with me. Carry on when you can. This is a, a, what this is the charge. So it won't be surprising to find Mr. Masunda carrying a bucket of water. <laughs> water <laughs> <in> the garden. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was the session for the record. Now I'll call upon my uncle, uh, just to my uncle. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, a lot of things have been said uh, in memory of my uh, uh, recently departed wife. So, what I want to do is to put uh, some of the things in context so that you can see you know, where the jigsaw puzzle fits in. Uh, starting with my uh, two feisty niece and nephew. The reason why they are so cheeky <laughs> is because uh, their mother was the third eldest member of the family. And she was the second eldest amongst the six sisters that I had. And Reverend Salamani, a lot of the things that you say on Saturday, on Sunday, and last night are so opposite in terms of the sort of background that my wife and I had. Within the family, we were 11. I was child number 11. And I was a freak child, an accident. <laughs> that, should, that should not have happened. Because I was born when my mother uh, turned 47. And that is why, amongst the 40 plus grandchildren that my parents had, you had nieces like me, like Samuel Niso and her brother Zenzo, who were almost the same age with my wife. Marginal difference. In fact, two, three, four of my nieces and nephews were not only older than me, but older than figures. 
but they never ever forgot that she was there and with by Joan Jenny. So, so I just want to pay a special tribute to, to them because that is one of the reasons why they felt they had to take charge of just about everything that was happening before and after my wife's uh, demise. Uh, many of uh, Felix's fellow, fellow politicians were under the bona fide but mistaken impression that she's in the belly. She was not in the belly. She was born in Pretoria, in South Africa. Her mother was Pedi, and she spoke Pedi first. And it only helped, so happened that uh, her father was obviously originally from uh, Chipinge. And those days, as uh, my feisty sister, Sekai Masikana Holland, was at pains to, to, to say, it was in vogue for, for men from this country, especially in Chipinge, in Matibulan South, Matibulan North, Bulawai province, to go down south in search of education. And in the course of, uh, of doing so, they imported back into this country South African women. So my mother-in-law and my father-in-law met in Johannesburg. And their first two children, <coughs> Ivy Lindue, and the brother who was in the UK, Victor Howard Duma, were born in Johannesburg. And my wife, as I said, was born in Victoria. And when the decision came on the part of my in-laws to come back to this country, they inevitably chose Bulawa so that uh, there wouldn't be too many hurdles to be overcome from an ethnic and cultural perspective. That's how they came to live in Bulawa in 1963-64. And my parents were community leaders. And my mom, being Corsa, was the unofficial head of all Corsa and South African women in Bulawa. <laughs> And on the other hand, my dad, having had the privilege, or dubious privilege, of being the first Shona speaking person to settle in Bulawayo in 1915, 1-5, there used to be hordes and hordes of people coming through our home, including Mr. and Mrs. Pezu, when they got here. That's how I got to know the family. And amongst many people that used to throw our home, was Joshua Mkabubo Nyongo and uh, and his younger lieutenant is no one longer with us, John Landa Komo, <coughs> and uh, Simon uh, Karam. So, so like I said everything about what you have in Blau and I won't go through that. So Phil and I knew each other's families. And as you know in our custom, marriage is a, a union between two families, not just two individuals. And we eventually got married, our couple of so short as my niece said in, this is now our 42nd year of marriage. And we then lived in, uh, first lived in, uh, in Abu Dhabi, then moved to our present house in 1982-83. A lot is mentioned about Figula's prowess in golf and passion for but what is not commonly known is how Figueres started playing sport. She was not into sport by any stretch of imagination. <laughs> I was the one who was into sport, having played competitive sport since the tender age of eight in 1960. But Phil had occasion to, to say to my mom, my husband is always away from home playing sport, so I need to do something about it. What do you suggest? And my mom said in Corsa, acquire those implements or tools, I don't know what you call it. It started off with a tennis racket, she then took up tennis, followed by squash, then followed by golf. Because my mom said to her, that's the only way you are going to be able to spend more time with my son, because I know he's an avid sports person. So that's how she took up sport. So we used to have many Davis Cup uh, tournaments as a family growing up. I would play with this uh, strapping lad that you saw earlier, Taguma, uh, when he was about six. 
and Fila with Lebu Takuma, uh, who was about 11 then. And I was not allowed by Takuma to make any mistake. Because the time I made a mistake, we turned out, what did you do that for? What did you do that for? What did you make a mistake? You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> That's how far that he was from the time he was that poor. Takuma mentioned something that doesn't happen that often. Every Monday, he played golf with his mom. Literally every Monday. But what the more conveniently omitted is the fact that when he fell in love with his current uh, uh, girlfriend, Kundai Florence Jesse, uh, who doesn't play sport, she's got other, many other attributes, but sport is not one. <laughs> there was a fierce tug of war between Figila and Flor and uh, and Kundai and with Taguma caught in the middle of all that. <laughs> so to, to Kundai Florence, uh, I would like to say that uh, the course is now clear. <laughs> Taguma is all yours. <laughs> and uh, then let, let me move on to I will skip a whole lot of things. Phil went to school, started school in Pretoria and then continued in Blawa, trained in Pilo, as like I said, and uh, qualified as a state re uh, registered nurse, and a state certified uh, midwife. And in our early days, uh, as we were, you know, uh, building a family, I used to work, like most lawyers do, punishingly long hours. I would never sleep before 1 a.m., almost daily. So she decided to use that time to take up something that was not remotely connected with nursing and qualified as a chartered secretary of these you know, chartered secretaries and administrators. That just shows you the kind of determination that she had when she started onto something. And when she took up off, within an incredibly short space of time, she became the vice president of the Zimbabwe Ladies' Golf Union, which again was quite a remarkable fit. Then this bit about mayors, it came like a bolt out of the blue. She was not here when it happened. She was mourning her father who had passed away in Bulawayo. I did not know that I was going to be the mayor of Harare. Nelson Chamisa's boss, uh, Morgan Richard Chagurai, sprang this nasty surprise <laughs> on me. I woke up as Mr. Owner and Citizen on the 1st of July. Uh, 2008, and ended up uh, at 5.30 that day as mayor of Harare. <laughs> you may not believe it, but it's true. And when I tried to get hold of Figula to let her know that without any discussion with her, she's now the mayor of <laughs> And I, I the invidious task of not only facing her upon her return, to Harare, but I also had two formidable sisters who were the only two sisters surviving out of the six that I had. And one they're both here, this is uh, Aida Lindiwe Mutasa, who is 92, and Claire uh, is in Tombizanti Masunda, who is 77. Now the remarkable thing about my formidable sisters is that they're both on WhatsApp. <laughs>
Because during the five years that uh, we were in office, Figile and her team used to raise 100,000 US dollars every year. And in 2011, they broke an all time record and raised 320,000 US dollars. But it was not all about money, it was about taking up, picking up the pieces from where Chani Ditch had left in what was then Salisbury in 1962. Chani Ditch was a social climber whose husband, Ivor Pichanik, whose name was probably shortened and undersized to Pitch. So Chani, as the guy uh, briefly alluded to, took it upon herself to fundraise in support of the disadvantaged colored children in Acadia, Brayside, and Hillside, under the auspices of the Salisbury Mayor's Christmas cheer fund. That was meant to bring cheer upon the faces of these disadvantaged uh, kids. There was a law from 1962 until Figula got into that office. And so she eclipsed a whole lot of things that Chami Pitch did. We ended up supporting through the mayor's, we probably renamed it instead of Harare Mayor's Christmas Chair Fund to Harare Mayor's uh, Chair Fund, cut out the Christmas because it was not, not all about Christmas. So we supported 86 charities and created more than a legitimate expectation on the part of, uh, of a lot of the designated uh, recipients of these monies that were raised and the food that was raised. So it's a crying shame that my successors in that office have not seen fit to pick up that ball and run with it. So my appeal to them is please revisit that template, work on it, and improve it. The last thing I want to say which was said by many, especially Reverend Salavani, is that uh, without her support, I would not have been able to accomplish the umpteen things that I've accomplished, not just in this country, but I've been known to many of you during the last three years of my term as Mayor of Harare, I was elected President of Mayors for the whole of Africa. And I represented I represented uh, Africa on the World Association of Mayors. And the difference between the African representative and the others was that all the other mayors that represented the other regional hubs, continental hubs, were politicians. One of my colleagues is today the Prime Minister of Portugal. The president of the World Association of Mayors then was widely tipped to be the next President, Prime Minister President of Turkey. Now he's a gentleman that took a liking to me uh, and made me act in his place. So these Millennium Development Goals that you all know about, the transition to the Sustainable Development Goals was done by me by default, instead of the mayor of Istanbul, with the high level team at the United Nations working with Ban Ki-moon and, uh, <coughs> and uh, Amina Mohammed, the current Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations. So without fearless support, I would not have been able to accomplish all those things. So I just want to thank all you St. Lucans for the support that, uh, and the fellowship that uh, you enjoyed with my wife. And to, what I explained to police is, the reason why you have been conspicuous by my absence from here is because I'm Presbyterian. And I'm not a Heidi Mashona type <laughs> who, would have, who would have insisted that my wife should go to the Presbyterian Church. She was brought up in the Anglican faith, so I was quite at peace with her continuing from where she had left off. After all, I'd been uh, exposed to a lot of uh, the Anglican faith in Bulawayo almost to a point of uh, becoming an Anglican by osmosis. 
because virtually all the, the bishops, like Kenneth Skelton and Robert Mercer in Blauer, Matabilda, and even Walter Bakun, who was the Archbishop for the whole of uh, Central Africa, they were regular visitors at home. So, so and, and I also got married uh, by Bishop uh, Jonathan Chester at uh, St. Andrew's uh, Parish in Pokemon. So ladies and gentlemen, I'll cut it short there and just say thank you for your support. I will try to pick up all the pieces from where Pigla left off, especially with regard to our feisty uh, four-year-old grandson who was particularly close to Figli. And he's been asking me awkward questions in the last couple of weeks. And I would quite a formidable hello to overcome with him. Because one of the questions asked me last week uh, on, on Thursday, I <coughs> he said, Saguru, do you mind if I ask you a question? I said, yeah. He says, uh, why have you been driving Gogo's car during the last uh, couple of weeks? And I said, well, is there a problem with that? He said, but what's wrong with your car? I said, my car is being serviced. He said, no, Saguru, I don't believe you. You crashed your car. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm worried that as Gogo is getting better, she will need her car back to take me to school and take me to the donut store <laughs> after school and buy me things at some ladies' village because you don't do that. <laughs> Thank you very much, my uncle. Thank you very much, my name is Siabong. And now, and over to Reverend Salman. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Pastor Suela, for uh, leading this uh, section of speeches. I will now ask the uh, Reverend Father Patrick Mapaliba uh, to lead us with uh, prayers uh, before God viewing. So I will ask Pastor Sarawi to move a bit. Uh, so that you can help us uh, rearrange uh, the setup here with the two of our family and other guys who do the good of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rama. As we come to this stage of this funeral, which is emotionally painful and heart-rending, we shall pray for our Lord to console us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, <coughs> by your mighty power, you have given us new life in Christ Jesus. We entrust Figure Patricia Faith to your merciful keeping. Especially this time as we physically come to see his face, view her face at this last time. Comfort us, console us, and be with us forevermore. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, and now I'm going to be a bit more. I'll invite our 
Papa Juma, Joy uh, Kumberi, I also invite the man to the violin, uh, and also the choir to be singing hymns and songs and pieces as we do our body viewing. Uh, as usual, we will start from the back. Uh, after the rearrangement, Panama, I'm sure we are going to create enough space for us to maneuver. So we'll start from the back and we we'll use the two exit points to the right and to the left. Once we leave uh, this building, I think it's the best for us to get into our cars and start uh, the journey to one Hills. Uh, also thankful uh, to the city of Harare uh, traffic squad. Uh, they've been helping us to build the traffic. We have part. They helped us to manage the traffic and to uh, to negotiate. So I'm hoping they are going to be with us again as we process to one views to uh, try and negotiate traffic. And uh, I think they are going to uh, help us chart the best way uh, that we should use uh, travel to one views. We've got two buses uh, that are out there to help those who do not have transport. So please feel free to use the buses uh, to go to one two that they are paid here at the party. Yeah. 
de Mahoko, we are behind time. That's the way time. So, Peter, what do you do? Because I think that's it. Fine, you have to think it. I think I'm going to go to Mahoko. I think I'm going to go to Mahoko. I think I'm going to go to Mahoko.
Oh, my way. 
Pasarabu Nesu Makore ma Shoma Tisatita Sanga Niswa Neha Maza Kafa Tenziere Tenzigazi Rao Mea uyo Mea une Mosa Nisambe Nisambe Ropara Konisa Tinda Tungwa Ona tenziere Tenzigazi Rao Sa 
atoba kwa sarabu nesu makore ma shoma tisatita sanga ni kwa ni ha maza kafa tenziere tenzigazi rao me auyo we au de mosa ni sambe ni sambe bu propara konisa tinda tokwa ona tenziere tenzigazi rao
Nesu Kurwa One Simba Kuita Basara Mari Ture Gazuita Fona Tenzi Ere Tenzi Gazi Kwa sarabu nesu Makore ma shoma Tisatita sanga niswa Neha maza kafa tenzi ere Tenzi gazi rao Umea uyo Umea Nisambe Nisambe Ropara Konisa Tinda Tumwa Ona tenzi ere Tenzi gati Rao
kurwa kuita basara mari ture gazita zona tenzi ere tenzi gazi Yes. 